So one of the biggest developments in my lifetime or my research lifetime of over 40 years as a chemist has been that chemists and physicists can manipulate individual atoms. Sometimes they can even see the atoms themselves. I've just read the description of a very exciting experiment from Griffith University in Brisbane in Australia. It's about imaging a single atom, in this case a viterbium, which is also nice because it's a rare earth element and one that we like. And in this particular experiment, they have been looking at the shadow of an atom. Now, if I take a ball like this and a light source, like this torch, I can shine the light onto the ball and you can see a shadow underneath jiggling around as I move the torch. So even if you have one atom suspended in space, and you can do this by having a magnetic field which will trap an atom if that particular atom is magnetic, such as ytterbium. But even if you've got this, if you shine the light on it, you can't see a shadow because the wavelength of the light is much longer than the size of the atom. And so the light just doesn't notice the atom. However, if you have an atom which can absorb light of a particular wavelength, then when it absorbs light, slightly less light will come out the other side. So it's a sort of shadow through absorption rather than just because it's blocking the light. So you need a very precise wavelength of light to make sure that the atom absorbs it. So in their experiment, they chose very carefully which element to use, and then they had to match the frequency of the light using a laser to make sure that the atom absorbed the light. Now, once the light was absorbed, what would come out of the other side is a diffraction pattern, so it wouldn't look like a shadow, so they needed a lens to image that onto a digital camera so they could get the picture. And to do this, they used what is called a Fresnel lens. Now, this is a really poor example of a Fresnel lens. It's the sort of one that I hope keep in my pocket in case there's something too small for me to see. But the principle is that it's a sheet of material, in this case plastic, that has concentric ridges, small ridges of plastic, which focus the light. Fresnel lenses are used quite frequently in lighthouses to send a focused beam of light out to warm ships. And it's used quite widely in physics and chemistry as well. And in this case, they used a really special Fresnel lens to focus the light that had been diffracted by the atom. What they saw, and which has never been seen before as far as I know, is the optical effect of a single atom of, in this case, ytterbium. And this is really exciting, not so much because people are really interested in ytterbium, but you can imagine doing the same thing with molecules. And with a molecule which has not got a spherical shape but has a definite shape, you can perhaps use this as a way of probing the structure of the molecule and because the molecule vibrates, you might even get information about how the molecule is vibrating as well. And the authors of this paper are particularly excited that you might be able to do it with biological molecules, which are rather big and difficult to study by other methods. So it could be a real breakthrough, but like most scientific experiments, the first result is exciting, but what's really exciting is where you can take it on afterwards.